a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Jared Polis Jared Shoots Polis is an American politician, entrepreneur, and philanthropist who is the governor-elect of Colorado. He has been the U.S. representative for since 2009. He was elected governor of Colorado in 2018, making him the first openly gay man elected governor in the United States, as well as the first Jewish governor of Colorado, a member of the Democratic Party. Polis is a former member of the Colorado State Board of Education. During his tenure in Congress, he was among its wealthiest members, with a personal net worth estimated at nearly $400 million. Early Life and Education Polis is the son of Stephen Schutz and Susan Polis Schutz, founders of Greeting Card and book publisher Blue Mountain Arts. He was born at Boulder Community Hospital in Boulder, Colorado, in 1975. He lived in San Diego, California, during his high school years, and graduated from Large Ola Country Day School in three years with multiple honors. He also received a Bachelor of Arts in Politics from Princeton University. In 2000 he legally changed his name to use his mother's surname, in part to raise awareness for a fundraiser and, because he simply, liked it better. Business Career Polis co-founded American Information Systems Incorporated while still in college. AIS was an internet access provider and was sold in 1998. In 1996, he co-founded a free electronic greeting card website, BlueMountain.com, which was sold to Excite at Home in 1999 for $430 million in stock and $350 million in cash. In February 1998, Polis founded ProFlowers, an online florist, in Large Ola, California. In December of that year, economist Dr. Arthur Laffer began advising Polis and joined ProFlowers as a director. ProFlowers, later renamed Provide Commerce Incorporated went public on Nasdaq as PRVD on December 17, 2003. In 2005, Provide Commerce was acquired by media conglomerate Liberty Media Corporation for $477 million. Philanthropic Career In 2000, Polis founded the Jared Polis Foundation, whose mission is to create opportunities for success by supporting educators, increasing access to technology, and strengthening our community. Its main programs are the annual Teacher Recognition Awards, the Community Computer Connection Program, which refurbishes and donates more than 3,500 computers a year to schools and non-profit organizations, and the semi-annual Jared Polis Foundation Education Report. Polis has also founded two charter schools, one with multiple campuses across three states and a post-secondary school, the New America College, for at-risk students. In 2004, he established the charter school, New America School, which is a high school that primarily serves older immigrant youth ages 16-21 and has three campuses in Colorado, in the Denver metro area, two campuses in New Mexico and a campus opening in Las Vegas, Nevada in 2013. In 2005, Polis co-founded with Urban Peak the Charter School Academy of Urban Learning in Denver to help youth at risk of becoming homeless or living in unstable living conditions. Polis was named Outstanding Philanthropist for the 2006 National Philanthropy Day in Colorado. He is a recipient of many awards, including the Boulder Daily Camera's 2007 Pace Setter Award in Education, the Kaufman Foundation Community Award, the Denver Consul General of Mexico, OLI, the Martin Luther King Jr. Colorado Humanitarian Award, and the Anti-Defamation League's inaugural Boulder Community Builder Award. At the time of his election, Polis had founded a number of companies and is one of the ten richest members of the United States Congress. State Board of Education In 2000, Polis was elected at large as a member of the Colorado State Board of Education and served for a single six-year term until January 2007 when the district was eliminated. His election was one of the closest in Colorado history as he defeated incumbent Ben Alexander by 90 votes out of 1.6 million cast. Polis served as chairman and vice chairman of the Colorado State Board of Education during his term. 
ballot measures. In 2006, Polis served as co-chair of Coloradans for Clean Government, a committee that supported Amendment 41, a citizen-initiated ballot measure to ban gifts by registered lobbyists to government officials, establish a $50 annual restriction on gift giving from non-lobbyists, establish a two-year cooling-off period before former state legislators and statewide elected officials can begin lobbying, and create an independent ethics commission. In November 2006, 62.3% of Colorado voters approved the Ethics in Government Constitutional Amendment. In 2007, Polis Company chaired the Building for Our Future campaign that supported ballot question 3A in the Boulder Valley School District to issue $296.8 million in bonds for the improvement and modernization of aging school facilities the largest capital construction bond issue in the district's history and the largest school bond proposal in Colorado that year. In November 2006, 58% of Boulder Valley School District voters approved the measure. In 2014, Polis planned to champion two ballot measures which would have limited fracking in Colorado by banning drilling near schools and homes, and by empowering communities to pass their own rules. However, the measures were dropped after he reached a deal with Governor John Hickenlooper to create a task force. The absence of the initiatives was seen as a relief to vulnerable Democrats who would have had to take controversial stances on the issue. Elections In 2008, Polis won a heavily contested Democratic primary election for Colorado's 2nd Congressional District, and went on to win the general election on November 4, 2008 winning 62% of the vote to succeed Mark Udall. In 2010, Polis won 57% of the popular vote to win re-election. In 2012, Polis ran uncontested in the Democratic primary and won a third election to Congress with 55% of popular vote. In 2014, Polis won a fourth election to Congress with 57% of the popular vote. In 2016, Polis won 56.9% of the popular vote to win re-election. In 2018, Polis announced that he would be running for governor of Colorado. Polis won election as governor with 51.1% of the vote, becoming the first openly gay person elected governor of any state. Tenure Polis is currently the Red to Blue program chair for the DCCC, helping recruit and raise money for Democratic candidates in competitive congressional districts. According to sources close to Polis, he has eyed a higher leadership role in the DCCC, running for vice chair of the House Democratic Caucus after then-chairman Xavier Becerra was term limited. The position ended up going to New York Congressman Joe Crowley. Education In 2011 Polis, along with Senator Joe Lieberman, introduced the 2011 Race to the Top Act. The legislation authorized old provisions and some new ones including, new standards to encourage and reward states based on their implementation of comprehensive educational reforms that innovate through four-year competitive grants that allow more funding to expand charter schools and compensate teachers in part based on their students' performance. Polis has sponsored other education bills and legislation regarding students including Polis has also introduced the Computer Science Education Act, which helps provide job training for computing jobs, and the ACE Act which would provide funding to improve outcomes for students in persistently low-performing schools, and to authorize school turnaround grants. In 2015, during a back-and-forth exchange before the House Education and Workforce Committee's Subcommittee on Higher Education and Workforce Training, Polis argued for schools to be able to use lower standards of evidence when deciding to expel students accused of sexual assault by stating, if there are 10 people who have been accused, and under a reasonable likelihood standard maybe one or two did it. It seems better to get rid of all ten people. Shortly after the comments, Polis said that he misspoke during the subcommittee hearing, and that he committed a major gaffe during the discussion. Civil liberties and conservative sources have pointed to Polis' comments as evidence of the drive to erode due process rights with regards to answering accusations of sexual assault at U.S. colleges and universities. Iraq Polis opposed the Iraq war saying that, 
The invasion of Iraq was a colossal mistake and I opposed the war from the very beginning. Bush's blunders, and the Democrats who gave him cover along the way, have left us without easy solutions for improving the situation. During a congressional trip to Iraq Polis praised the Sons of Iraq policy, which funds former military and police officials under Saddam Hussein to lay down their arms against coalition forces, patrol neighborhoods, and fight against other Sunni insurgents. In an op-ed, he wrote, If we had started this policy sooner after the invasion, we no doubt could have prevented loss of life. As can be expected, some of them turn out to be corrupt and attack us anyway. But most seem to be helping to keep the order. The challenge is to bring them into the fold of the new Iraqi government and a proper chain of command structure. In the op-ed Polis also said, The hippie in me bemoans the fact that we defeated the Iraqi military only to help them build an even stronger one that might one day be used against children and innocents, as often is the case. When will all the killing end? Where have all the flowers gone? And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and they shall study war no more. Afghanistan Polis supports removing all troops from Afghanistan. In 2010 Polis supported a failed resolution to withdraw all troops from Afghanistan within 30 days, saying that, I don't believe that this ongoing occupation is in our national interest, and that, I supported the initial action to oust the Taliban in Afghanistan, and that succeeded. The challenge we face now is a stateless menace. Polis also took a congressional delegation trip to Afghanistan, Meeting with the former Afghan Interior Minister Mohammad Hanifatma, U.S. military officials and diplomats. During his meeting with Mohammad Hanifatma, Polis focused on the education gap between Afghanistan and Western nations, the low literacy rate for Afghan police and military officials, and combating political corruption. Polis has criticized expanding U.S. troops in Afghanistan, and supports putting resources in intelligence and special operations writing in a report after visiting Afghanistan that we need all the high-level diplomatic support we can to master the diplomatic complexities of fighting against an enemy holdup in two countries, as well as navigating the complex regional politics. Also adding that, our best estimates show there to be no more than 5,000 Al-Qaeda fighters in Afghanistan and Pakistan. They operate out of areas in southern and eastern Afghanistan and on the Pakistan-Afghanistan border. Do we really need to occupy an entire country of around 30 million people to root out 5,000 enemies? I harbor a deep degree of ambivalence about the military surge. The diplomatic surge is good, increasing our cover tops, and intelligence abilities focused on Al-Qaeda is good, but adding tens of thousands of American troops for years doesn't necessarily get us closer to defeating Al-Qaeda. Iran. Polis voted in favor of the 2010 Comprehensive Iran Sanctions, Accountability, and Divestment Act expanding economic sanctions against Iran under the Iran and Libya Sanctions Act, and co-sponsored H.R. 1327. The Iran Sanctions Enabling Act of 2009, authorizing state and local governments to direct divestiture from and prevent investment in companies with investments of $20 million or more in Iran's energy sector. Human Rights Polis, along with Representatives Barney Frank and Tammy Baldwin, has called on the United States Embassy in Iraq and former United States Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to prioritize investigating the allegations of rape, torture and executions of LGBT Iraqis saying, such disturbing violations of human rights should not be ignored and the United States should not stand idly by while billions of taxpayer dollars are used to support their government. Along with the support of 35 members of the House, Polis has also called on the State Department to address violence against the LGBT community in Honduras. Civil Liberties While in the House, Polis has been a staunch advocate for civil liberties, saying while campaigning in 2008 that balance must be restored between the executive and the judicial branch and between the executive and the legislative branch. Patriot Act Polis has been a vocal opponent of the Patriot Act. In a letter to House Speaker John Boehner, Polis stated that the Patriot Act is a bill that has been plagued with abuse since it was first passed. 
and today's rule is yet another example of short-circuiting the system that our founding fathers set up. If there were ever the need for the close supervision and congressional oversight of the law, it is a law that discusses how and under what conditions a government can spy on its own citizens. On February 2011 Polis voted against H.R. 514, extending expiring provisions of the Patriot Act, authorizing court-approved roving wiretaps that permit surveillance on multiple phones, allowing court-approved seizure of records and property in anti-terrorism operations, and permitting surveillance against a so-called lone wolf, a non-US citizen engaged in terrorism who may not be part of a recognized terrorist group. Internet Piracy Polis supports an open and free internet, and has been critical of Zopa, Peeper and CISPA, saying in an interview with Forbes that, I oppose piracy and want to see intellectual property protected, because that is what fosters and rewards innovation. But Zopa won't accomplish a meaningful reduction in piracy and causes massive collateral damage to the internet ecosystem. While debating Zopa on the House floor Polis said that Zopa and Pipa directly threaten the very internet that has brought humanity great prosperity and greater peace, and that, allowing the military and NSA to spy on Americans on American soil goes against every principle this country was founded on. Polis, along with 167 other members of the House, voted against CISPA. Polis, along with representatives Zoe Lofgren and Daryl Issa, sponsored Aaron's Law, in the wake of the suicide of computer programmer and internet activist Aaron Swartz, who was facing computer and wire fraud charges, and more than 30 years in prison and fines of over $1 million for violating the terms of service for illegally downloading academic journal articles from the Digital Library Register. The proposed bill would exclude terms of service violations from the 1986 Computer Fraud and Abuse Act and from the Wire Fraud Statute. Polis said that the charges brought on by U.S. Attorney Carmen Ortiz were ridiculous and trumped up, and that it's absurd that he was made a scapegoat. I would hope that this doesn't happen to anyone else. And, uh, Polis voted against the 2012 National Defense Authorization Act, and is against Section 1021, which has drawn controversy about implications to detention policy. After the law was signed, Polis, along with other members of the House, introduced legislation to repeal the indefinite detention provision. Though legislation has failed to pass the House, Section 1021 is now pending in the courts. Brought to you by Wikivide Documentaries. Would you like to know more?